Hi and welcome to another another video. This is actually a video from um, it's in response to a, a comment or a question that was put on about my decryption profile, the Mode 44 decryption profile. Um, it's I here and I looked into it and I thought actually that is that is configured really badly. So I'm going to um, going to make a video and just and just change it on the video. So if you just wait till the end, there's also a, a quick tip at the end of the video to get maybe get you out of out of jail free. Um, should you have some commit errors or, or push errors on your firewalls. So let's 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 begin. So when I actually had a look at the mode 44 decrypt profile, which we can see on the VM London here, uh, we, can, we can see that it's really kind of allowing everything through and, and stuff that you, you probably shouldn't allow through. Um, so just to go through it now, this so this is what the profile looks like. This is the mode 44 decryption profile so for SSL forward proxy um, okay I mean we're, we're blocking sessions with expired certificates I mean that kind of makes sense now believe I think actually um, if we go to um, the default one oh no it's not actually I wonder if when you start it let's just see because this is now me no so if you create it so I've actually selected that well done me Okay, so I'm blocking sessions with expired certificates. So if, if I see an expired certificate on the other side, I'm going to block that session. Uh, block sessions with untrusted issuers. Um, I'm not blocking sessions with untrusted issuers because, well, because I didn't tick it. But uh, it, that that can cause problems as well. I mean, there are certain places. It depends how your, your profile and your rules are set up, really. So... If you are going to take into consideration that you would have, so you'd have multiple decryption profiles, I guess would be, that's going to be the best answer. I think it's going to give you the best balance of control and security. Uh, because a lot of times you'll see things, I mean, in most organizations that I've worked in, the certificates for the firewalls and so on, um, when you go onto the to the web UI, uh, are untrusted. Um, and so you'd, you could have a lot of issues with untrusted issuers. However, in today's, um, SSL based world um, I guess that is something you could consider now is is blocking sessions with untrusted issues as a general thing I mean you should certainly do it in a high security situation you should cert well I mean it should it could be argued you should do it regardless and then deal with any exceptions afterwards um, block sessions with unknown certificate status uh, again can be a little bit um, questionable based on how long it takes to get that certificate status back um, block the sessions on SNI mismatch with server certificate uh, that does what it says basically so if there's a server name indication um, and that's different to the server certificate we're going to block that uh, block sessions on certificate status timeout check timeout so um, I guess you would probably use that one as opposed to that one that would probably make more sense I guess because then you've given it time to, to timeout restrict the certificate extensions um, that you, you then can restrict these particular extensions and then you might want to look further into certificates to work out why you may or may not want to do that. And then append the certificates um, CM value to the SAN extension. So basically when the Im impersonation certificate reaches the, the client, the requesting client is going to append the CN to, um, to the SAN extension, to uh, subject alternative name extension. Uh, so for unsupported mode checks as well, we've got block sessions on supported versions, yes. Block sessions on supported cipher suites, yes. Uh, block sessions with client authentication, depends if you use client authentication. If you do, then you, you don't want to block that. And if you don't and you see no reason for it, then uh, you could. Um, and then these, these here again are sort of blocking sessions. So a lot of this is to do with if the resource is not available, makes sense. Block sessions if HSM are not available. So if your private keys are stored on HSM, that's not available, fine. And then um, block downgrade on no resource. I mean, you would probably see quite a lot of attacks actually where you could, you know, something's being bombarded and then you uh, then you try and get in after that to to block uh, to sorry to get everything to downgrade to to what you want it to be so you can attack it better, I suppose. Um, the strip ALPN. Okay, so we that's to use um, within HTTP2. ALPN is application layer protocol negotiation. It's used to negotiate the protocols over over uh, HTTP2 over TLS. Um, basically, if you if you strip the ALPN from that, it has the effect of 
removing all the application layer negotiations. Once it it's done that when you, when the firewall sees that and it's blank, it will then downgrade it to HTTP S. Okay. Uh, inbound inspection. Inbound inspection is is obviously coming in. Um, this is where you are you're uh, decrypting within the stream. So block sessions on supported versions. Block sessions on supported cipher suites. Again, makes perfect sense. And then where your private keys are. Again, we've got the same failure checks there. And then here we come to the SSL protocol settings. Now I can't actually alter it from here because uh, because this is on this is on Panorama. So again, just as a, a, a sort of a refresher, we'll go back to Panorama and we'll go to uh, the objects, and then we've got the Dev VM London, which we see there, which is the device that we are on. And I will just check and make sure it's still in that because last time I think I might have moved it. Dev VM London? No, I didn't. Okay. Sorry for my uh, my waffling there. All right, so we're going to click into it. Okay, so so now we can edit it. So what do we want it? What do we want it to look like? And I mean, I guess I mean I I don't use client authentication, so we're going to have client authentication. Definitely block downgrade on no resource. Uh, block sessions no resource if resource is not available. Yeah, we'll do that because we don't want to end up in a situation where we have. Um, we have like denial of service attacks and so on. Block sessions with untrusted issuers. If I do that, I'm going to have a load of trouble with my stuff at home, so I'm not going to. I'm going to go for block sessions with SNI mismatch. Block sessions on certificate status check timeout, so if I check it. Um, and then we're going to append the certificate's CN value to the uh, SAN extension. I don't have any inbound inspection, but as best practice, if I were to use this, I definitely block sessions with unsupported versions and block sessions with unsupported cipher suites and if resources not available. And now for protocol settings, this is where I actually, it actually got flagged up on my AI, AI ops as well ages ago and I never looked at it because say it's just a it's just a lab. Um so obviously one zero is is right out now. I mean that's just you just wouldn't Okay, so for the, the TLS version we have um the minimum you could set it to 1.3 you could have uh, the minimum set at 1.3 but bear in mind that some things won't actually support that so really now we should be using the minimum of 1.2 and then the maximum version is max we should be removing sha1 we see immediately so if we just go back to there and just put that back to one so then we see sha1 and three des and rc4 are ticked if we move that to 1.2 there um three des and rc4 are removed Okay, um, RSA we'd want to remove as well, and then we're going to click OK. Uh, oh no, hang on, let's just check and see. Uh, so no decryption yet. We're doing the same. We're doing what we want to there, and then the SSH proxy we're not dealing with at the minute. Okay, so that's that's our protocols. Okay, click OK. This, of course, is in favor of using uh, DHE, just the RSA thing, just in favor of using DHE or ECDHE, which provide the, the, the forward secrecy. Okay, so we can click OK, and then we're going to commit that. So we're going to uh, we'll try and commit and push. I bet it won't do it. If it will do it, it might not because of the, the whole uh, database thing. Yeah, right, that did actually complete. However, I just want to just point something out. So what I had was I had a commit error. If we look down here, we'll see it failed. Uh, it's just a quick, just a, just a by the by thing. So basically it failed because uh, we're messing about my lab. I've, I've taken out this uh, Chicago LAN primary interface and root and so on. So what I did to get around it, rather than keep fighting my way through that, which is of course the right thing to do, um, because I'm a bit of a you know a cowboy, the thing that I did was I basically went into uh, just because that's network and device. So when you push to devices, and we can see we still got the VM London template. You go to edit selections. So where I had this uh, this tick. I also had this ticked here. So even though that wouldn't have been, I've still got 
include device and network templates. So by removing the include device and network templates, I removed the template push, which meant that I could push my my um, my device configuration, my device group configuration, which is policies and objects. Um, but I didn't push the the pesky network or device template. Uh, which was causing me the problem. So that's something just maybe just to, to bear in mind, just a little tip at the end there, um, to bear in mind that uh, it's, you know, potentially um, that's something you can you can do um, if you need to. Okay, so that's it. And I hope that answered the question. Um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.